everyone, welcome back to the JNC Collectibles channel. Uh, I am Shenping. Today, bring you another deck profile from a remote regional that played in the past weekend. That actually won in the past weekend. Um, so before I start hopping to the deck, let me some shout outs first. Uh, shout out to my team, Team JNC, fantastic team, fantastic leader and teammates. Uh, shout out to the sponsors, uh, Dragon Inc. and Dueling Guard. Uh, remember to use code. JNC5 for 5% off on their products on their website. And then, um, without further ado, I guess let's hop into uh, the deck profile. So, different than in the past couple ones that you've seen on this channel, this weekend I actually played tier um, instead of rest case. Uh, I wasn't gonna play um, this remote regional, I had some plan for this, this weekend. However, my plan kind of got canceled very last minute. So out of really anything to do, I decided to sign up like the like late night Friday. And then uh and turn out oh also as we all know, there was a panelist uh on like Wednesday, uh and it's going to be effective on January 1st. So this remote regional is technically a pre panelist tournament. And uh Late, I will let you know. I've seen uh, everyone trying to play their decks very last minute. I saw, I met like two Infernoble Knight, two Unchain, a Tear Mirror, and then just all, all the all the decks that shouldn't be existing. I mean, even including myself. So technically, this is this build, like the one you're looking at right now, is more a post boundless build that I build preparing the incoming, because I have some some regionals before Phantom Nightmare. However, um, because the, the remote regional is a pre balanced tournament. So I ended up just kind of build one for, build a list for post list and then add back the millers to it. So it's like, it's probably not the perfect ratio for the current format instead of the post balance, but it worked out. I mean, I went undefeated until the very final round, and then drew the final one because um because I know even I take a draw, I'm still first place. Uh, instead of really like start a game three and then hope for the best. So uh, I guess uh, we'll talk about the uh, cards uh, a little bit. Um, tier standard three tier, uh, three rhino. Instead of two that I usually play, this this list, this version specifically play three. Because I do want to turbo out uh as many possibilities as I can for Bahamut Shark into Toad. Um this honestly is like such an easy move to make that maxing out Rhino, like even if I've used Rhino's meal effect, I will probably still use Rhino's graveyard some point later that turn just to make sure I have a uh, access to Bahamut Shark and Toad. So yeah, three rhinos needed in this one. Uh, tier cash and then Furnier. Furnier honestly isn't like, in my opinion, before the ban list, it's it's not even a good that good a card. Um, Furnier become a lot better after ban list. Like the the weaker the format is, the better Furnier is. Um, however, that's not the case before the ban list. Uh, I think before the ban list, Furnier isn't good enough to be, to fit anywhere in the deck. But I didn't really bother changing that much. I just brought the post balance ratio, and uh, it turned out, it, it, and it was being, it, and it was working very well with this one for here. So uh, I, I guess it's okay. And then nice little serpent. This is another level four water that if it's sent to grave by card effect, revive myself and leave the uh, then get banished when it leaves the field. Um, so it's not it's nothing special. It's just a level four water body. That help me make rank fours or specifically shark toad. Then the shufflers, honestly, after the balance, I, I my list post balance was even like one shuffler in the main, one shuffler in the side. Without the millers, these cards don't really go to Gavir um as much as it can. So, uh, one is enough in the main, and then the millers like well. <laughs> The last few tournaments we get to play them. Might as well just abuse it as much as we can. And then the horse cards. Horse are, in my opinion, are the best addition to tier since uh, the release of last set. Um, 
these cards are so broken. They work by themselves. They work like they're, they're okay mills like in some point as long as there is like a, an access to King Sark in my opening hand. And then raw drawing, like top decking into M Seti or even King Sark is such a powerful thing. And also they're big, they beat out things. There are a lot of times where I kind of used everything else, tra traded away everything. And then at the end of my combo, I just bring back the horrors and just leave them there. Even leaving M Seti and Happy just standing there, it's actually surprisingly threatening to a lot of decks. A lot of decks can really out these with the buff, with the protection under King Sark. And then if anything leaves, like adding two ba a back from Graveyard or Banish Power with Happy in a tier deck is literally just like searching any two cards out of the whole deck. So, uh, yeah, I uh, also King Sark has a hidden fight where um, if a horse per turn, if a horse monster battle an opponent's monster, it can just send it. This actually became the one of the best way to out like annoying monster while not triggering things. I remember I played a, a, an, an Unchained guy use uh, like a happy with King Sark to just send some monster that doesn't trigger. Um, like unchanged like graveyard from when they're destroyed and i think that also happened when i was playing a fire king guy um so his grunix couldn't come back and yeah these cards are so broken they're they're a fantastic starter they're a fantastic like extender uh i i think oh at this point not playing them is almost wrong and then there's the the d hero package or the rank six tool um things um, just to turbo the the powerful rank six monster, um, I guess yeah. As you see, there is even an M seven there. Uh, we'll talk about it once once I get there. And then Nessie and Mossman, I play, this, this is like the minimum amount of dangers to the point where these three cards are almost not even being treated as danger cards. In my opinion, they are just Nessie specifically is the very few dark aqua monster that just doesn't even exist in the card pool besides the tier monsters um i so i do need some number of nessie to make sure whenever a tier landed into graveyard i can go into garura as another six or i have other aqua body for clydohar um that's not the tier cards and like Gamasil could be a possible one for to fill the aqua role, but Gamasil isn't a dark. Uh, so tier plus Gamasil does can, can't even fuse for anything. Um, Nessie become the only one in, in like in the entire carpool that's worth running. Then Mossman honestly just the the target to search off Nessie and uh, also the good part being a level four. But the level four monster ideally I want them to be water instead of dark. But eh, it's not like I can ask for more. It's it's already doing the the best thing. Then three drills. Um, there are only three spot in like tier decks usually, three non engine cards. Uh, out of all the possible ones, I like kind of browse. Drill and is becoming the one that like shuts down most decks. Um, the one drill doesn't do well against like lab and some few other matchup, but. Those matchups usually are the good matchup for tier naturally. So without the help draw, uh, without the help of draw, it's probably fine. And some other decks like the super combo heavy deck, like I played, I played two Inferno Blooms yesterday, uh, and I think draw won me like few, uh, one or two games because I opened it. And then some other matchup I didn't get to see, like Manadian. Also, it's kind of a scary matchup when they go first, and draw definitely helps. Um, better than any other cards. And that's one of the monster spell wise. Two planet or two par parlorino, one ray cells. This is always the ratio I like to run. Or uh, well, plus one terraforming. Uh, parlorino, in my opinion, is not a good card. Well, it's it's an okay card. It's not that good of a card that a lot of people give credit for. Um, back then, during like pod darkwing blast formats. Where it wasn't searchable because Trooper Karma wasn't a thing. Yes, you're running three to maximum the chance you draw it. But now this is technically a searchable card, which in the definition you will almost never prefer to like running too many copies of it. Because 
drawing two planet like two two polarino is nearly a death sentence in my eyes. This is like the second copy of Polarino is literally the deadliest card in hand. It can it's not a tier spell trap that can be cost for Rhino. It's not a monster that can, that can be sent by Sharon. And the only thing it can be used is pitching as a cost for M City like the horse cards. Which any card can do that. At the end it's like I'm okay now. I like I winning I win games without opening Pellerino because I eventually get access to it. But I've definitely lose some games that I notice where I draw too many Pellerinos in my opening hand and resulting me play like four or even three cards opening hand. And so just to reduce that like losing possibility, Pellerino is always a two of my eyes. With the help of Trip Combo. And then Rezos plus Terraforming is like the addition recently, well, technically for post battleless because I see Furnier be a little bit more stronger compared to pre battleless. So uh, I just kept it. Um, Rezos and <laughs> I play the Cash Guy, and he think he he thought it's a mirror, so he straight ashed the Rezos as my first card. Uh, turned out I have both Sharon and M City in hand, so yeah, he definitely lost the last game. Then, uh, Screen Grief, I don't see a lot of people play Grief, which surprises me. Grief, grief is such a broken card in tier. It's searchable, and the, the Great River add back a trap from the Banish Pile, which actually happens because tier cash can just banish traps always. And this is like a guarantee fusion, because at worst case, it's a, it's a foolish burial. You summon one monster, then send the same monster. So it triggers whatever tier you're missing. And most of the time, I just summon Rhino, send Rhino, then Rhino pitch whatever in my hand. You should be probably so if. And if it's like, if, or sometimes I pair well with Grief and Tear Cash. I just Grief some Rhino, Rhino triggering the Grief. Then Rhino 1, I'll Tear Cash channeling 2 in hand, banish the Grief, summon it. Uh, if Tear Cash was the only Tear card in hand, Rhino would just summon. Well, Rhino will resolve as much as you can, summon, and don't discard because there isn't any tier cards left in hand. This combo can get a lot of things set up pretty easily compared to relying on luck by just hitting millers or good things of the mills. So yeah, in my opinion, Grief is arguably the best tier spell trap existing. I will even say Grief is better than Pellerino a lot of time. Now without kick outs. And I would be playing too. I was playing too in my post ban list, um, tier list. But in order to fit the millers, I was like, oh, these are technically quote unquote starters. So um, one is fine for this weekend. Same same logic applied to screen. I was looking at the entire deck. I was like, what card can I really cut for? The two millers and the foolish. Uh, scream the second scream become and has become one of them. I do miss it a little bit because like scream is very nice going first, especially in Mira and then in the grind games. And then having more scream give me more odds of hitting it and then end with his and end with own traps. But it's like these are all just like in the in, in kind of a little bit way more or in in the already good game stay will make it better, but it doesn't make the bad game stay good. So at the end, I was like, okay, well, on screen is good enough for this weekend. Post balance, I'll play too. Oh, well, because these cards will be gone. Then Terraforming is honestly combined with Race Source. Without the Race Source, without like two different kinds of field spell to choose off Terraforming, I think Terraforming just can, can be cut. I'll just play two Polarino without if I don't play Race Source. Then Foolish honestly for the Miller. Post balance, I don't even play this. Um, Foolish Goods is for Triple Comma. If I do side out Triple Comma, I side out Foolish Goods as well. And King Sark. In my opinion, King Sark, the entire horse package is so broken, I should be playing three King Sark. However, <laughs> I was going to go out to hang out with my friend and also pick up the third copy from them. Turned out I couldn't go last minute, so I have only two copies to play, so I, 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 so I won't play two. Um, for my post balance uh, build, there are three, King, there are three King Sarks. And then the standard trap, Soliac, Meta Noise, and Trooper Cop. Honestly, Meta Noise is even like an FE one. This is this one isn't 
Like it, it's good to be milled meta noise, but there's like it, it's ultimately feel like a worse zodiac in some cases. And then just to reduce the number of traps, it's arguably it, it's like an argument to lower lower the total number of trap and by cutting meta noise. But nah, I I ended up just like well, might as well try it. It gave me. There are definitely games where um I just honestly end on very small monster board, but I have double trap set, which these two trap do pretty well, um against something. It's like especially like in terms of like protecting my IPSP, uh, Metanol is doing it better than Soliac. Also, Soliac usually. Uh, I think the monster that you easily uh that that's easy to be sent is tier cash, which doesn't guarantee a fusion. But meta noise usually guarantee a fusion whenever it resolves. So there are pros and cons between these two, and it's just three balls in the deck. It'll be fine. So yeah, that's the whole main deck forty two. Some ratio definitely was not perfected because it was it was a list made by like during the twenty minutes I decided to join the tournament and fight night. Um, but overall, uh, it, it was solid. I don't think I bother changing anything because the format's technically over. Um, extra deck, uh, Clydo, Danger, Drago, Garama Dragon, Standard Fusions. There's no King of Swamp, so there's no, like, interesting fusion monster. Honestly, I don't fuse as much as you would think every turn. Like, usually every turn, I only do, like, one or maybe two fusions. Barely really resolve all three. I think during the turns I resolve all three, I, my opponent probably would be dead. And then the links. Uh Cross Sheep IP Cross Sheep IPSP. Uh IPSP are such easy but also threatening inter ending board monster to make in this in this carpool that not playing it feels wrong. And then because of these cards existing. It's like, I don't really need to play anything special like before, like you probably saw with uh, Gragno, Schism, and other things. I think IPSP just posing uh, that much threat already by itself. It's a lot easier to make with nearly no bricks in, to require for these. And then Crash Sheep is honestly just to help ga gathering that many Link bodies for like IP and then things. My ending board usually be Crash Sheep on the top and then Ideally, like a reader and a toad plus an IP with some back rolls. Um, and then there are also games where um I make SP, use the SP on field if I banish something because I have fusions as material, and then I link away the IP into sheep. Uh, then I shuffler or I fuse back the SP. Then I end up IP again. So yeah, they're 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 dipping dark monster is also very helpful for. Fusing for my dragons. And then it exceeds Redoer, Standard, Dweller for the Mirror Match, and Fire King. Uh, Shark Toad, the package. Surprisingly, this is like ex the existing of Toad just completely replacing Baron. Uh, without Baron, like I don't have to worry about weird like tuners, levels. Yeah, I don't have, it, it, all I need to do is just two level four bodies, which there are plenty of them in, in the deck. Uh, Rhino by itself is already is. Uh, nice or Serpent, and then any tier few is most likely able to go into a Mud Dragon because there are so many dark non aqua monsters existing in my list. So, yeah, uh, Shark Toad will become like it's, it's arguably as good as like could be even better than Baron because when Toad resolve it, adds back a tier cache and tier cache and start things again. Um, so yeah, and then Shark is like a free link body after activated, so uh, usually Shark just turns to IP immediately after. And then um, the rank six Beatrice and M seven, uh, Beatrice standard. They're they're Miller, so Beatrice, M seven, because the horse cards are so good to the point. If I don't open it, I just try to mill it and make a rank six to add it back, and then turn on my horse cards. That's how like the synergy here is. Um, if I do open horse cards and I already comboed with horse and I still able to make a rank six and I don't, and when I don't even need to make a Beatrice, I can make an M7 to add the drawback, which had happened doing testing and doing a tournament. It was a uh, pretty brutal for my opponent to even look at me doing that. 
And uh, the la last but not least, Zombie Vampire for Force. Pretty self-explanatory. And then, um, uh, overall, the extra deck, they are, these are all just, like, easy-making extra deck monsters. Uh, just ending on something like IP Toad. Actually, surprisingly threatening to, to a lot of decks. Toad and the gate get, get Tear Cash, Bad Tear Cash, Summon again, Mill 3, then link away Tear Cash and IP into, uh, into the SP, the SP banish on Summon, and then force out another thing later. Those are just like already 3 4 interruptions, but the requirement is so minimal. And because Toad is such an easy access negate, there are games where I summon like Shark, well, I summon Toad with a 5. For for example, like M Seti patch like a, a Mothman, a Sarge King Sark, normal Rhino, send any name, the name plus Mothman into. A mud dragon. This is two. The mud dragon and rhino into shark into toad. This is only four summons. And then all I need to do is just activate King Star, bring both horse back, and then I am resolving horse combo under the pro protection of toad. Which is uh then all these link bodies later can turn to like sheep, IP, whatever I want. And then uh side deck. Cowboy for time. Uh so is the dog wolf for time. Like realistically. After I built the side, it was only like about 12 cards without the dogwood. I look at everything I could be playing. I turn, I realize even if I do play those cards, I wouldn't really side them in. Because not like I can really side out anything from the main decks. So I was like, oh, there's one situation I can double down, which is time. I mean, tier do go into time pretty often. So yeah, dogwood become the one. Uh, Ash is for lab and also just for coverage. The deck tier do lose to race a little bit, mainly because tier cannot run a lot of non engines, and then uh, race are naturally better against non engines. So overall, I just run the like draw and the ash together along with the super poly and the bull wipes. It this is like ash at the end become like one of the in my opinion the one that can shut down race the most while they comboing. And if they do combo, I still have the bull wipes too out there for other monsters or the back rows. That's why there's the super poly, duster, and evil. Um, hindsight, I could run more super poly targets for more different matchup, but haven't really thought about that much. That much, because the format post balance is not clear yet. Pre balance, I think, uh, just these two targets already enough for super poly. And call by is like. <laughs> For people draw me going first and then or well, and, sh and shifter and now it's also naturally a good card against fire king and then all the graveyard decks. So yeah, this is uh pretty much the list. Um, like I said multiple times, it's not like a perfect list with perfect ratios. It was made very last minute Friday night by editing the post list version. Uh, and uh, well, I'm just glad I was lucky enough actually won the regional. But overall, I had a great time, but the mailer should be gone. Uh, that being said, hope you like this profile, and then if so, make sure to uh, like the video, subscribe to the JNC channel, and as well as my own channel, um, Shun YGO Lab. Uh, and I will see everyone in the next video. Bye-bye.